Let's use eigenvalues and eigenvectors to solve a system of differential equations. As part of this, I'll also show you how to find eigenvectors, something we have not yet done an example of. In particular, let's solve this differential equation. We can rewrite it as a matrix equation. And we are looking for the eigenvalues of this thing. Remember that to find the eigenvalues of A, you look at the determinant of A minus lambda I. This is going to be a polynomial. You're going to set it equal to zero. So the eigenvalues of this will be the roots of polynomial. I is this. So lambda i is this, and a minus lambda i. is this. Finding the determinant of a two by two matrix is straightforward or relatively straightforward. We multiply the diagonal and the anti-diagonal elements, and we subtract them. Doing the college algebra part of this problem off screen, we find that we have two eigenvalues. Is five and negative two. And now we'll look at these eigenvalues one by one to find the eigenvectors. Let's start with lambda equals five. The eigenvector equation is a minus lambda i times v equals zero. In this particular case, um, a is this matrix, phi of i, is this matrix. So A minus five I times V equals the zero vector. 
factor. This is a matrix equation. We know how to solve it on our calculator. So we set up the augmented matrix. Remember that the columns correspond to the components of this unknown vector, except for the last column, which corresponds to equality. Each row is giving us an equation. On our calculator, we use the RREF command on this matrix. But something a little different happens than happened in the set of notes where I taught you how to solve matrix equations. The equations we get, V1 minus 2V2 equals zero. Well, okay. The second equation, 0v1 plus 0v2 equals 0. That's giving us no useful information at all. It's telling us that 0 plus 0 equals 0. So all we have is this. And now we'll select V1 and V2 to satisfy this equation. We can't let them both be zero because the zero vector can never be an eigenvector by definition. But if we selected V1 equals two, V2 equals one, for example, that would satisfy this equation. Or if we selected V1 equals one, V2, equals one half. There are an infinite number of selections we could make. Let's go ahead and use this one. This gives us two one as an eigenvector. So two, one times e to the five t is a solution to this differential equation. If we can find a second solution, we'll be done. And the second solution is going to come from our second eigenvalue. And because the process of, is the same, I'm going to go through this faster. We take our eigenvalue, we set up our eigenvalue, Vector equation in this particular case. That's this. We solve this matrix equation on our calculator using the RREF command. When we perform, when we're finding eigenvectors, we should always get at least one of these useless zero equals zero statements. If we don't, something's gone wrong. This row, however, tells us something concrete. 
that V1 plus one third V2 equals zero. So V1 equals negative one third V2. And now any um, pair of values of V1 and V2 that satisfy this equation give us an eigenvector. The only condition we have is that they can't both be zero. So if we let V2 be negative three, that would make V1 positive one. This is an eigenvector. And from this, we get a second solution to our differential equation. We have two solutions. That was all we needed. We can now write down a general solution. If you prefer, because this original differential equation wasn't written in terms of matrices. It was written as a system like this. You could go down here, x1, x equals x1, x2. If you perform all of this scaled or multiplication, you get x1 equals 2 c1 e to the 5t plus 1 c2 e to the negative 2t. x2 equals 1 c1 e to the 5t minus 3. C2 e to the negative 2t. And there, written as a system, is our solution to this system of differential equations.